Hello crew, it's Rob and Rich from The Film Look, where we drop filmmaking knowledge bombs. And today we're going to be converting a vintage photography lens into a cine lens using 3D printed parts. The way this rehousing works is that you attach a new shell to the current one out of 3D printed parts. The lens we're upgrading is the Helios 44-2 58mm f2 lens. It's that cool vintage lens which has that swirly bogey, and we've used it a lot. 85% of our short film 60 seconds was shot using it. For a lens which is 40 years old, it's definitely worth doing a little upgrade. Plus, there are plenty out there, so if you wanted to do this, they are available. The rehousing is made from six different parts, which were all printed separately and in three different colors. For those of you who don't know how 3D printing works, you take a digital 3D design, select your printer settings, load it into this printer, click print, and 22 hours later, all six parts are now three-dimensional solid objects. Now we have all the parts printed, we can assemble everything together with each part sliding into the lens with a little bit of pressure. The dimensions of each part fit really well and full credit goes to Thingiverse user Edward Park for creating this design. Can't imagine how many hours it would take to measure out and you know 3D design this whole thing. Uh, links to all of the 3D files and a full assembly video can be found in the description below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Each part is held in place using these small grub screws, which you have to tighten evenly all the way around. The trick is to tighten each screw just a little bit at a time, making sure everything stays in line and it's not rubbing against each other. There is a little bit of a trial and error and it took me a few attempts to get everything working, so just take your time. The black outer housing slides on next, which helps hold everything together. And on the front of the lens, we've attached a few step up rings. They go from 49mm, which is the Helios thread size, all the way to 82mm, so you can still attach ND filters to the lens. Right, I've not seen it yet. Rob's been working hard getting this built, so I'm gonna be the one with the first impression. So let's pull it out. Oh, it's heavier than I thought it was gonna be. It's got a lens in. <laughs> Picking it up thinking, oh, it's 3D printed. You know, looking at the pictures of it, you would think that it would be a bit like clinky and like a plastic lens. In it, like you can crunch it, and but this is like, feels really solid. Right, now that we've printed everything together and it's put together, we've realized that the three tone doesn't work. It kind of looks like a licorice all sort. And I imagine in the comments section, some people are already complaining. So we're gonna print some new parts. Six and a half hours later. I think we can agree that this looks a lot better than that. Before, it did look like a kid's toy. The new size is a massive improvement, especially when pulling focus by hand. The larger diameter improves accuracy and the gear rings have been built to attach a follow focus. Overall, the housing is a lot closer to a cine lens. The aperture gear ring makes it easier to change the f-stop as the original ring is super small, but the biggest improvement is the aperture number ring. Since the Helios 442 is a manual lens, your aperture information doesn't get sent to the camera. Now with a larger number ring, you can clearly see which f-stop is set to when you're shooting. I've linked the aperture and focus settings to this set marker point on the lens, which comes in really handy when you're setting focus marks by hand. I did spray the number rings in a plastic sealer, so it will be much easier to rub off any dry white marks that you make. And the outer housing might be made all out of plastic, but when everything is fixed in place, the construction is solid. If you drop it, the plastic might break, but I suppose now the rehousing is serving as a protective cover for the lens. I did have a printing error when printing the focus gear ring, so when I tightened the screws, it did crack. This can happen with 3D printed parts, but I don't think it's going to get worse now everything is screwed down. If it does get worse, I can always print another one. You can still screw an ND filter onto the front of the lens as the new thread size is 82 mil. We just need an 82 mil lens cap to protect the glass, which we've 3D printed. The total material cost to print all of the parts was around about two pound with the screws costing another pound, which is great value. But obviously if you don't have access to a 3D printer, it's gonna cost you a lot more with our setup costing around about 300 pound. If you don't want to deal with printing it yourself, there are 3D printing services out there ranging from about £50 to £100 to print this exact thing. But if you look on places like Facebook Marketplace, there are hobbyists who will do this at a fraction of the price. So obviously the rehousing doesn't improve the optics of the lens, but the optics were pretty good to start off with. It's just cool that we can upgrade the usability of a 40-year-old lens with new technology. 
If you don't have a Helios 442, the designer has plenty of other vintage rehousing designs on there as well. So just pick the one that you want to print. We're hoping that they'll eventually come out with one for the Jupiter 985 mil. This is like one of our favorite lenses. And currently our Cine rehousing is just a 3D printed gear ring right here. So this thing is definitely worth the upgrade. Speaking about upgrade, if you would like to see more bonus videos from us and be a part of our community Discord, you can head over to Patreon like all of these lovely people have done. We've got loads of extra bonus things over there and it helps support this channel and helps us make videos like this one. So links in the description to that and bye.